when it came time to do those uh, Kiss solo albums, uh, was it a no-brainer that it was Ace you wanted to work with? Well, um, I think what had happened was that the guys in the band each picked their own particular uh, producer. Um, I think Ace and I, we had always sort of gotten on pretty well, so it seemed natural uh, that I would do his record. And it, as it so happened, I mean, it, it, it turned out great because we had the only hit single. Mm-hmm. And in spite of the fact that he couldn't really, he still was not a great vocalist, but he had great attitude. And sometimes great attitude means more than being a great vocalist. On, on that first uh, Ace Frehley solo record, uh, production-wise, uh, it contains quite a few uh, experimentations. Was uh, Ace more open for experimentation uh, when it came I to do so? I think it was a joint sort of feeling, you know. We we were not restricting ourselves in the fact that both he and I enjoyed experimentation. You know, the fact that I'd done so much of that sort of thing, experimenting with sounds with Jimmy, um, both Jimmys, of course, Paige and, and, and Hendrix, uh, that uh, it was just a natural just to screw around with some sounds and you know Ace is very uh, imaginative he was able to uh, come up with some cool sounds and of course once I heard the sounds that he was doing then I could do something different and it's, you know it's an evolving process it's not uh, it's not something we set out to do it's just one of those uh, situations where you know you hear a good riff and you say oh how about we do something wacky with this and uh, you know, Ace loves wacky things. So do I. And of course, uh, the hit song of that album was uh, New York Groove. Uh, and that was, of course, a, a British hit single uh, three years earlier uh, from the band uh, Hello. Uh, how come you suggested that song for Ace? I'm not so sure that I actually suggested it. I think it's something that Ace have, came up with. And I jumped all over it. As soon as I heard it, I said, this would be great. And um, we kept working at it to make it um, really, really jump. And thank God we did, because, you know, it has over the years become a standard uh, for him. You know, it's used at the sports games. Um, It's a sing-along, you know, it's a great song. And I think what we did to it was to make it really commercial and really rocked out, which has never been done to it before. Uh, according to uh, a recent interview with Ace, uh, well, he actually says that it uh, was you who came up with doing that track. <laughs> well, you know, the mists of time. Who, yeah. I mean, if he's saying that I'm taking credit, I will take the credit. Um, okay. I'm, re- you know, quite frankly, I'm not really sure where the hell that came from. You know, it's funny, and this is the problem with memory. Mm. I thought Ace may have come up with it, but maybe I did come up with it. I just don't remember. Mm. Um, God knows where I would have gotten it from. Mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. It, it's too long ago. You know, the 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 dance beat to that track is uh, is almost like a disco. Like, uh, did you listen to what the kids kids was dancing to at the time? Oh no, we all hated disco. The fact of the matter is, it's not quite really disco. It's just got a thumping beat to it. That's all. Mm. But disco would be something we would have definitely not wanted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, a couple of years later, of course, Ace left Kiss, and uh, you did the Freeless Comet album in 1987. But before that, uh, actually, the Freeless Comet band formed in uh, uh, early 1984, I think, and they did uh, a number of uh, demo recordings with uh, uh, high-profile uh, producers uh, like yourself, uh, like Vinny Poncia, like uh, Chris Kimsey and Tony Bon Jovi. And uh, if I have uh, the records uh, correct, uh, you were the you were the first uh, guy they did they did demos with back in 1984. Do you remember this? Not really. Quite frankly, I don't remember the demos. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I think I have no memory of doing the demos. Where, where, do you know where they were done? Maybe at Ace's uh, house, at his uh, studio. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there were, uh, yes, he had a studio in his house. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think I went up there and cut some stuff with them. Because uh, if uh, the bass player John Regan remembers correctly, you did the first demos in 1984. Uh, and, and, and those songs uh, were mainly written by their keyboard player at the time called Arthur Stead. That's right, Arthur Stead. He was very good, actually. He was a good writer. Yeah. And those songs, uh, some titles were I Will Survive, uh, I Got the Touch, uh, Wired Up, The Girl Can't Dance, and an early version of uh, Remember Me. Uh, but th those songs uh, were very, you know, uh, uh, left field. They had, you know, much more of a popular production, a popular feel. Well, I think, you know, after the success of the solo album, the fact that he was still with Kiss, uh, and then having left the band and then tried to sort of jumpstart a career, a solo career again, um, I guess, you know, the, the thing to be aware of is the fact that since he had that hit single, that the thought was, well, we need some more hit singles in order to, you know, push the career forward. Mm. So I think, I think that the fact that we had Arthur Stead in the band, who was actually, like, like I said, a, a good writer, I'm not quite sure whatever happened with Arthur and Ace. Um, I'm not quite sure why that all fell apart. Um, something in my mind says that there was an incompatibility there, but I don't remember what it was. Um, but yes, of course, you know, we, we were looking for another back in the New York group, um, which would have been great had we had that. I think we could have done quite well. Uh, what did you think of uh, Ace's new, new band at this point? Uh... Well, I mean, you know, it had all the elements. Um, whether or not we had the back, I can't remember what label was that on. Uh, well, the... It was Megaforce, wasn't it? Yeah, the first album you did, but before that uh, they had a problem securing a deal, and uh, they got a deal with the British label Bronze Records, but that deal fell apart. That's right, yes. Well, I think that there was a history of not having great relationships with the record labels, and that maybe the perception from the record companies was that Ace was, you know, not really commercially viable, which is really silly. And then when you did that uh, Frailest Comet album, which was released in 1987, it was a new band again, and, uh, well, Anton Fig was, of course, still in the band, and John Regan, but they had Todd Howarth, um, who yeah, played the... Right. Yeah, a good guitar player, actually. I mean, it, that, that had another shot at possibilities, because he's a good-looking kid, he's a good guitar player, and, you know, we all thought this was going to work out once again. Of course, it didn't. Why do you think that, it did? That's the way the record business. Mm. Mm. But uh, how did you approach that production uh, for that first Frailest Comet album? What did you want to achieve uh, production-wise? Well, uh, I think everybody who's in the record business wants to have a hit album. You know, that's, that's the number one thing. You know, whether or not we were able to achieve it is another matter. Um, Gosh, I don't remember, quite frankly. You know, it's so long ago to remember what my thought process was in those days. But do, do you remember uh, anything about the actual recordings? Uh, because the band had been playing, uh, like, uh, you know, half of those tracks uh, for a number of years. Uh, w were they easy to get on tape, or do you remember? Oh, well, recording Ace was always easy. That's not, that was never the problem. He was always very professional in the studio, and... I you know, was able to get great sounds immediately. You know, we got great feel right away. Getting the tracks was easy. You know, the actual process of recording was simple, but it was more than that. It's really a question. Of, okay, that may be simple, but how do you make that into a hit record? Who is behind it? How much publicity? How much money is behind the promotion of it? Do we have a hit single? You know, um, I think it was hard for Ace not being with Kiss. Mm -hmm. uh, in what way was it hard for him, do you think? Uh, I don't know. You know, without that big machine behind you. Yeah.